My name is Davin Sturdivant, and in this Aim Learn Fast video, we will learn some tips and tricks to understand how to configure your GPS lap timing in Race Studio. So I race competition carts, and I'm also a writer for Cart Pulse, which is designed to gather information about the sport of karting and put it into an easy to find place. So when I got in touch with Roger Cadell, who's the national trainer for Aim Sport, we decided to put together some videos about how to use karting data in Race Studio. We've broken them up into these little mini vignettes, hopefully to make it easy to consume. But if you have questions about whatever we cover, just leave a comment below and we'll put it in another video. So I'm going to turn it over to Roger and take it from there. So Roger, sometimes when I download data from a friend, sometimes I see some wonky things like two laps that look like they're merged together or a lap that's broken. Um, can you show me how to fix that? And then after we look through that, can you also just like verify that both sessions work correctly? Yeah, with with GPS data, we can not we can. It's like GPS. It's such a great technology that uh, you know sometimes we can. It really works great for you, and we can grab stuff and we can do so much with it. But it can also you know hiccup and give us a lot of bogus data, right? And uh, so so we need to have some tools to to find things and to fix things, and and uh, we need to make it as quick and easy for the user as possible. So yeah, these things are getting less and less. You know, as we went, you know, the Micron fours were our first you know GPS equipped piece of equipment in carding, and and. Um, and, and then now we're with the Micron 5s, and, and we, they've made such improvements that uh, you, we don't see these problems very often, right? Especially the, the first part of your question, which was laps that just aren't quite right. And, you know, and I've brought up some data here, you know, from, from your home track, and, and I'm going to slide this over. You, there is a lap, right? But the trouble is, you know, it looks like a lap, but if we zoom in a lot, you can see that it's actually two laps, right? And you can see by the, down here in the test laps toolbar, the, the, it did not record a lap in the middle. Right at, at the end of the at the end of the uh, straightaway here, it did not in 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 the start finish line that we selected here, it did not pick up a lap time there. So uh, that happens occasionally, and uh, and and so how do we fix it? Right, number one, recognize that it's there, and you can see here, well, kind of a, a couple quick tips to see it. Right, first is these bar this test laps toolbar down across the bottom, are based on time right the, the the size of them so if you look at lap number three here you can see that it's you know a couple inches wide let's say and you can see number four is about the same number five well look at number six it's shorter with a little chunk afterwards on lap seven well right off the bat your eye should look at that and go oh that's weird you know because these are these are kind of these are based on the length of and time of the lap right and number two the one we're active on right now is super long so you can kind of see that there's a you know that one combined two laps, and this one, you know, has a uh, has one that's split in half. So, yeah, there's a couple of ways to fix things. The, we're going to talk about the kind of the old school, the some tools we got in place for you to do it, and then we're actually going to fix it with, uh, you know, the the GPS lap insert function, which is um, a very very powerful tool that uses the GPS side of it more. So. First off, we need to understand that it happened. There, no doubt that the, we have two laps put together. And then if we come over here to lap six, look at you know, only half of the track, right? And then if I go to lap seven, you can see that it's the other, the last piece of the track, right? So lap six and seven it needs to be merged together, right? We can do that with just by recutting the GPS lap times again with GPS lap insert, which we'll do in a moment. but using kind of an old school way of doing it, if we go to the lap manager tab, and this is mainly was kind of designed when we, we were using opt optical lap timing and, and uh, it still works with the GPS stuff. But if you look at this, we have that real long lap there, lap two down below, lap two, 227.741. And, you know, the lap time here is about a minute, as you can kind of see here, right? And then we've got this 48 and this 11 on lap 6 and 7, which is 6 and 7. So let's talk about this uh, 6 and 7. It, it is as simple as highlight the, the first half of it. And in Race Studio, we have a lot of right-click, um, you know, context menus that are available to us. And this is one of the ones where you'll use it a lot. If I right-click right on top of that, we end up with a couple of choices. I can insert a lap which would be like lap two that we have to fix here, or I can merge with the next lap. So if, if I click out of that, 
let's click over here where we can actually see it. Merging to the next lap takes that 48 and merges it with the 11. Merge to the next lap, right? So you want to make sure you pick the right one. Don't take the 11 and try to merge to the lap to the previous lap because our, our choice is next, right? Uh, not that. Uh, not that I've ever made that mistake before, right? But, uh, but, uh, but uh, so you just highlight that and then click on merge to the next lap. That one would be fixed. I'm gonna go ahead and fix this one and watch what happens down below. You know, pop it regenerated it. That one has now been fixed, right? If we bring up the lap manager again, you can see that that one there has, uh, you know, that 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 uh, 48 and that 12 second lap is now a, a minute lap, right? We still have that real long one uh, early though, right? So what we can do there, yeah, yeah, we're going to fix this one with the GPS manager, but the old way of doing it would have been to come in and look at your lap time sheets that you got from the from the club afterwards, and let's let's pick that guy there, and you know that the start finish line on this particular data. And the way that I like to find it is just by clicking the cursor here near the beginning of the lap and, and put it up here where you end up with you know, a zero time and a zero distance up here in the upper right hand corner. That is the start finish line, you know, because we're all the way up against the left edge. That is right, you know, right in this area of that lap. And then if, uh, if I want to break it apart at that same exact spot, you kind of keep your eye on that spot. You know where that's at and you go find that spot you know, back over here, and you know that it, if you had the official lap time that you did from here to there, you would know what it is, or it's a minute 26.716, right? If, if you go right to where the, right where the cursor is there as well. So uh, I could come in and I could go back, you know, what is that, a minute 26.7, right? I could come back to the lap manager. I could click on that guy, right click, insert a lap, and I could put in a minute 26.7. I, it was seven. It could be seven oh three, right? W whatever the lap time actually was that you got from the from the club in the report, and I could click on OK, and it would split those two laps, that one lap into two, at a minute twenty six from the beginning. So it's going to go here, and it's going to go a minute twenty six point seven, and make a lap. That's the old school way of inserting and emerging and inserting laps. I'm going to cancel out of that and leave that one there for a second just to show. The other thing that uh, happens a lot, and that was part of your question as well, is you and your buddy have been out there running. You have your your start finish line is is over here, right? And uh, but with the official uh, SEMA start finish line is over on. Let me make that a little smaller so it doesn't move around quite so much so we can see it. The official lap start finish line is over in this area. Yeah, uh, your buddy put the start finish line over in this area. So you guys have put in coordinates from two different spots on the track, and and you're making your lap times from there. Do you want to compare data? And it's very, very difficult to, to, to share data when the start finish lines are in two different spots. So I'm going to bring up your, your, another test from your buddy here. And we're looking at 10. Let's look at 9. And boom and boom. And here's the problem, right? Let's, let's, grab, let's grab his best lap now. Let's, let's right click best lap. So there's the best lap was lap 5. And if we go to... Uh, this other test, right click and show best lap and it's lap four. There's the problem, right? There's your two speed traces. I'm going to bump up against the left edge again. So we're both of you are at your start finish lines and you can see that your test, the start finish line is over here at the official start finish line. And his test is over here on this, on this little back straightaway, middle of this back straightaway. And the speed traces don't line up at all. Right? So you can't look at this. Here's the braking zone, you know, for, uh, for, for this area here, which is actually matches up with this braking zone on the blue lap, right? This red one here matches up with that one there. Okay, well, we can do this a very short fix for just this test, just for this lap, and just to quickly look at it, or we can do a, a long-term fix that holds for, you know, every time you open this test from now on. Let's quickly look at both of them. The way you do a short fix that only works for this particular second, you know, this viewing of the data, is if you click on the snap mode, you end up with two bars across the bottom. And on the short term, we can we can click on the snap function, and then we can move, you know, the the two different laps until we match over here to the to the SEMA start finish line. So I just keep moving it, and then you line up those two X's in the GPS map. And then you know you're at the, exactly the same spot at the same time. So now those two are lined up right on top of each other. Now I can compare this data. The trouble is, is this is a short-term fix. As soon as I close this test, 
you, your buddy's test goes back to having the start finish line over here and the short back straight away, right? So let's fix it the, the correct way that will fix it forever. And you, you can take that data and work with it from then on. You can open it up again tomorrow and it'll be all correct at that point. So I'm gonna turn off the snap mode and we're gonna go into the lap manager. We wanna manage where he's got his wrong lap times on there. So we're gonna hit the lap manager we want number nine, which was the good test, which is where, you know, that, that was where the start finish line is correct. So we highlight lap number 10 and we go to the G GPS lap insert. This is the one we want to work on. And we have some choices. There's other videos out here, out there about this particular function, but uh, we can just set it from the start finish line, our, our start finish line from the GPS track database, which is, you know, stored in the GPS manager software. We can use a cursor position. I can just click here and say I want it there, but that may not match exactly with your start finish line, right? It might could be five feet off either side. We could do it just with the coordinates yeah, from Google Earth or something like that. But again, that may not match exactly what you have. So we have this fourth one, which is the one that you want to use for this particular operation. We either want to adjust both of them to the GPS track database, or we want to match him to you. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to set number 10, by clicking on that and then it tells me okay what test do you want it to match up perfectly against so we pick in this case nine because that's your test that was the start finish line was in the appropriate spot Cl click on that one confirm the selection and it's now it's picked it and it's ready for us to go so i'm gonna hit continue it tells me what all the new lap times for lap for for test number 10 are and then what we want to confirm it lap time successfully calculated and then I'm going to jump back into the to the screen. And now, if we bump up against the left edge again, like we've done in the past, both 09 and 10, both you and your buddy's tests are now exactly at the same spot. So, so we have kind of. If you if you notice also, uh, that little d double uh, lap there at uh, two and three where they were put together, that's been fixed as well because it's recut start finish line coordinates from over here for all of the entire run. So any problems we had before that were there that we may have already fixed or didn't fix have now all been fixed. So uh, GPS lap insert is a very, very powerful tool to, to fix broken laps. Uh, you, you will find that even when you're Micron 4, uh, not often, very often with the Micron 5 do you have the problems, but Micron 4 data, if it is bad, you can rerun the GPS lap insert function and it will it'll fix that data. And uh, and if you have another person's data that you're trying to look at and, and you guys have used different coordinates, uh, this will fix it as well. Of course, that's post-session. And really, the but the best thing to do is, yeah, you want to fix it and you want to use the data and you compare and figure out where, uh, where you guys can go faster. But as soon as you find this and you see it more than you, if you have to do it once, you're going to have to do it on every test that you're comparing data. So the best thing is to go ahead and get his Micron 5 over on the computer and put in the same coordinates on both of your uh, Micron. So then you don't have to do the, even that step, even though it only takes, you know, what, you know, less than a minute, right, to, to fix the data. It's nice if you just download the data and open it up and it's ready to go. So uh, GPS lap insert, but if it's, if you're doing it more than once, get back to the original uh, Micron and, and put in the right coordinates. So that's the end of this aim, learn fast video. We've been taking comments from throughout social media and trying to come up with new topics that are most useful. So feel free to leave a comment below or get a hold of us on Facebook or on Twitter and just let us know any questions you have or any things that you like about these videos. We try to put up new videos every Tuesday, so just stay tuned to our channel and come back for more videos.